morning, my name is Kyle, this is Mike, and we're going to show you some of the improvements we've made and three methods and how we got there. Um, like if you want to so we have what we call the Ono Circle, and it's a circle to stand in to observe. So what we're going to do is observe for two minutes while I go through the first process, and then we'll have to take feedback for improvements for one minute. We'll make those adjustments run the experiment for another two minutes, take a minute of feedback, and then we'll do all of our improvements to our third process to capture all the time savings. Kyle's going to record how many wires we terminate per minute, and then we'll see what the goal is to get to six wires within two minutes, and we'll see where we're currently at with the base of the original process. So as you can see, we got about technically one and a half terminations or two and a half terminations in two minutes. Um, with that, we can see what wasted uh, movements we have. We have to cut, strip, and ferrule. So we use two tools. We're manually looking at the print. We're checking it off. We have to look back at the print multiple times to validate the label. Uh, what we're going to do at this time is remove the cutter, stripper, ferruler, and the ferrules. And we're going to use the all-in-one cutter, stripper, ferruler to see how much time it saves. We still have to add wire labels, and we still have to measure out the lengths manually, um, and we still have to spool the wire. Uh, we'll try to bring the work a little bit closer to us by maybe not reaching for the labels. And so we'll bring the label just a little bit closer. And we're going to just continue forth uh, with this circuit, leaving these wires out here, and we'll continue forth at this time. One other waste we have is waste of motion with the wires. Um, we can swing the part around to make it easier. So in case you do drop a wire, you don't have to reach around to, to pull out the new wires. Were there any other ways anybody else notice? Well, the one that's obvious that is not really shown is the ways of going to make the labels and that. So, which you kind of preempted by bringing them now. So, understand for demonstration purposes that has to be done. One thing that I'm noticing is 
that's something that Mike already said, but it's the, the, the constant back and forth, it's the, the motion of repetition. So, um, um, and then also taking your eyes off and going elsewhere with your eyes and not being able to stay focused where it's important because I feel like when your eyes leave or when your eyes go away from the main focus, that's where distractions set in. Perfect. How do you know what color of lar to use? At what point in time? It's on the print. So here the print gives me the source and destination, the color, and the gauge. You can also set the print up so it's right next to it rather than like laying down. That makes it a little easier as well. Kind of having everything close together. I'd suggest having the car on the other side so you're not pulling the wire away from the room. Can you cross your body? Run it. So you have everything in front of you. So we've gone through and made multiple two second improvements, and these two second improvements add up. So now we're going to use all those and go into method two. So you ready, Mike? Go. Yep. So we'll give them that call it two wires. So with that two wires, uh, which would be a total of four terminations in two minutes, two terminations per minute, um, that's an increase of half a termination a minute, so over an hour. It's a, about 30 extra terminations. Um, so with that, we're going to continue forth with other improvements. Is one is we're manually measuring the wire. Two, we're still putting on labels. Uh, we did save considerable time and motion with using the all-in-one. Um, there was some savings in having the conductors in your hand and actually ferreling them and terminating them at the same time. Um, adds up a little bit. Uh, so what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna remove the print. The print seems like a distraction. We have to check it off. Uh, we're gonna remove the water labels We'll remove all the tools. I'm going to reset this and pull all these wires at this time. So while he's resetting, anybody notice any other ways that didn't mention? Any ways that you did not mention? So one that's kind of hard, I'll, I'll give you this one. Over processing, he's trying to save time. And while he had the wire in his hands, he was ferreling the next connection but he didn't need any more white wires, so it was over-processing, waste of motion. 
there's anything else? So at this time we remove the print. Um, we remove the print. We are using ePlan at this time. It gives us the color, the source, the destination, the gauge of the wire, um, and the harness is printed out in the systematic approach of what ePlan wants you to terminate it in. And all we're going to do at this point is set it up in that stage. Uh, I'll put it on the wire cards that we utilize. Uh, if we look at this screen, you'll see that it's synced and we'll be able to uh, clearly see it. I'm using the surface at this point, um, and I'll go through that process. And uh, One thing to note is that the source and destination is slightly different with the E-plan versus the print, because you have to interpret it uh, for the terminal block of which side to go on, so that could be a defect too as well. So we'll continue to try. At this time, we can see that we got one, two, three, four, five, a total of 10 terminations uh, versus two. So it's five times the terminations in two minutes. Uh, quite didn't meet our goal of six terminations in two minutes, uh, but fairly close by eliminating excessive motion, the over-processing of looking at the prints, validating, checking off the drawing. We're also gonna introduce a new concept here uh, who can give me a good definition of pokeyoki? It's just the, the act of making things simpler, dummy proofing things. What else? I agree. Uh, the wire numbers in order, coordinating with the uh, smart wiring program. So it's, it's air proofing. Air proofing, making sure that it's easily. Um, understood. So that's what ePlan has allowed us. So when he's clicking on these wires, it shows a red wire. So that's a check. He knows it's red. It shows him the route to take. So for example, if you have a tall closure and he's landing on one terminal up here and then a component way down at the bottom, he doesn't know if he needs to go, if he has pre-made wire, he doesn't know where he should land on that terminal. Should he land on the bottom? Should he land on the top? What if he lands on the top and he gets to the bottom of the component and it's too short? Waste of motion, over-processing, introduce defect when he really should have gone to the bottom. So this is our way of pokeyoking it. And also, when it comes out of the terminal blocks, it tells you the directions you should go as another um, uh, visual aid to show the route. Uh, another 
waist that you really can't see here is uh, waiting. With e plane here, we can have multiple people, as you saw. When he was clicking over here, it was showing up over here. So if we have two or three people working on different sections, like a door and the back panel, they can kind of work together instead of waiting for that person to be done. That's another waste to be eliminated here. Do you have anything else? Yeah, just to kind of touch on a few of those points is we still have the resources of looking at a drawing. If we run into a defect, the wire is too short, it's not printed correctly. All we have to do at this time is just make a comment, revisit those connections at the end of the drawing and punch list those items out. Whereas if we're going on the print, we'd have to manually capture that on a napkin and we have to do a post-mortem on that and address those issues. Whereas this is communicated, it's documented, we can lock the wire out and we can just continue forth with our work. Um, it's really the added value on that.